Welcome to the Internet Empowerment Mini-Series, hosted by author Deltina Hay and sponsored by Accolades Public Relations and Plum Web Solutions. I'm Deltina Hay, and these tutorials are based on my book, Social Media Survival Guide. You can attend full webinars on these and other topics at socialmediapower.com and learn more about my book and my availability for speaking engagements at deltina.com. Neither Deltina Hay nor her sponsors are affiliated with any of the tools or services highlighted in this series. In this session, we will discuss an introduction to the WordPress dashboard. When you first open WordPress, you're going to see the dashboard. This will have some general information in this main area, and then over here on the left sidebar will be the main menu areas for all the features within WordPress. In this session, we're going to talk very generally about the dashboard. We're going to be going into detail on many of the features that we discuss today in later sessions. So first, this first area here shows, kind of gives you a snapshot of what's going on with your blog at any given time in terms of comments, posts, pages, that sort of thing. Over here is, is an option called Quick Press, which is a nice way to very quickly uh, post a blog entry title, content, and then you can just click po Publish and be finished with it. Further down the page, you have a recent drafts, which will show uh, posts that you may have entered but not published yet. Um, here it will show recent comments that have come in for your blog. And there are two sections down here that um, list the WordPress blog and some other news that's going on about WordPress. It's kind of a, an overview of what's going on in the WordPress community at any given time. Another option here is incoming links. And this will show any links that are coming into your blog from other blogs. And then another thing that's supplied by WordPress is it shows kind of a, the plugins that are and the most popular plugins, the newest plugins, the plugins that have been most recently updated, that sort of thing, so you can get an idea of the new plugins that are coming out. And then this one here called Google Analytics is actually specific to a plugin that I have installed here. So your dashboard may look a little bit different depending on which plugins you have installed. Now if we roll up to the top here, we'll see that we actually have an option when we click on Screen Options there on as to which of these modules we actually want to show or not show. So we can uh, click on these, turn them off, and we can uh, actually even style our, our layout with different columns if we wish. So we have a little bit more control as to what shows up on our dashboard. This is also a nice uh, quick pull-down menu here. We can click here to just automatically go to post a new post or to create a new page or a number of other options. And the main features of WordPress show up over here in the left sidebar. If we click on Dashboard, we're going to be brought back to this page. The posts, this menu option here is going to allow us to view and edit existing posts, add new posts, uh, create or view the categories that we have, and the same thing for tags. Under media, we can view what's in our media library or add new options to our new media to the library. For instance, images, video, or music. Under links, we can create new links. Now, link is something that you might put in the sidebar of your of your blog that shows maybe your blog role or resources and just links to other places. And you can manage those here by adding new ones, and you can even create or manage link categories to organize them. Under pages, see this is where you can create static pages for your site, like your about page, your content page, that sort of thing. You can edit them or add new ones. You would click here to manage your comments. And now under Appearance, this is where you're going to control the kind of a look and feel of your site. You can um, add new themes or change your theme. You would control widgets from here, and the widgets are the little, the little modules that go on the sidebar of your site. You can create custom menus. And then this gives you an idea of some of the things that might show up in different uh, different parts of the menu over here on the left sidebar, depending on your plugins. On this site, I have a plugin installed that, that allows my site to show up properly on mobile devices. And so it shows a few other options here that would not ordinarily show up in the appearance menu, but are specific to that plugin. And then the background and the header options are I can click here to add a custom background or a background color to my site. And I can also upload a custom header. But these are very specific to whatever theme I have installed. 
So if you have a theme that doesn't support options like this, then these aren't going to be here. But something different might be there depending on which theme you choose. And then finally, I can edit my theme, customize it even further by clicking on the editor. Now right, right here is the area where we would actually install plugins, um, view the plugins that we have in place, and even go and edit the plugins if we wish, and update it, plugins. Now here's where you would manage your users. You can add additional users to your site, or people who can just post, and you can give them different roles, like uh, just um, people who can only add posts, or people who can do uh, maintenance to your site, that sort of thing. Now under Tools, what comes automatically with WordPress is you'll have the Tools menu, Import, Export, and Delete Site. These other options down here, again, are specific to the plugins that I have installed in this site. Now the settings that come automatically with WordPress are General, Writing, Reading, Discussion, Media, Privacy, and Permalinks. Again, these other settings down here are specific to plugins that are installed in the site. So this should give you an idea of kind of once you install a plugin, you may need to look in a few different places to find out where you can actually customize or set up that plugin. And then finally, these two options down here are, are specific to plugins. So they may even add their uh, an entire menu option. This is a, a contact plugin that I've installed and then a, a different plugin. Now, the other thing that I want to point out is that this, the dashboard that I just talked about and the menu options that I just talked about is specifically for WordPress.org or hosted WordPress blogs or sites. WordPress.com dashboard looks a little bit different. And if we go over here and take a look at one, the main areas here are, for the most part, the same. There may be a little some different things, for instance, um, what's hot means what is going on in WordPress.com, and your stuff is also going to reflect the types of things that you've been doing on the entire site of WordPress.com, not just on your blog. And so since if you create a blog with WordPress.com, you kind of become part of that larger community, you're going to see some different things on here than you would on a WordPress.org um, hosted blog. You're going to see uh, stats and surfers, way for you to like, you know, surf uh, blogs and look up blogs, that sort of thing, and whether you subscribe to different blogs and WordPress.com. So those are things that are going to show up on the dashboard that aren't on the other one. Also, you can upgrade to premium features on WordPress.com. The other things that are going to look a little different is you have this ratings. This automatically comes installed on WordPress.com, where you can control how people can rate your blogs. And then also you can create polls very easily on WordPress.com. One of the things that you'll notice is missing are plugins. Now WordPress.com doesn't allow you to install plugins. However, they have a lot of pre-installed plugins, and they always take suggestions for people who want different types of plugins to be included on their site. And you can control most of their plugins within the widgets area here. Now they also have an extras, which is something that you can you can click on to see kind of what things that you can turn on and off, like little extras you can add to WordPress.com, but those are also free. Background and header, again, they have a theme that allow you to change that uh, depending on what, what theme you have. Also, they have typekit fonts, which allow you to create kind of fancy fonts on WordPress. In the Edit CSS area, you can edit your theme, but that is a premium feature, so you do have to pay a small fee for that. Users is the same is the same as uh, WordPress.org, except that you're also going to have your profile and personal settings, and those are like within the WordPress.com community. Now, settings are also going to be, for the most part, the same. General, writing, reading, discussion, uh, media, and privacy. They do not have permalinks because they automatically set those uh, settings. But the additional items you're going to have here in WordPress.com are open ID, sharing, domains, and webhooks. You might want to kind of open those up and poke around if you have a site on WordPress.com. And that is all we're going to discuss in this session. Remember, in later sessions, we're going to go into a lot of these menus and features in much more detail. So please stay tuned, and um, thank you very much for listening. I want to encourage you, however, to 
Visit our sponsors if you can, uh, accoladespr.com, Plum with a B, WebSolutions.com. Go to social media power to attend webinars, and you can always find me on Deltina.com. Thank you again for listening.